Hey everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name's Karen, and this is Stuff and Things. I'm a bit of a tinkerer. I like to repair things and build little weird projects. And one of my friends has dropped off his keyboard for a fix. This is a Rocat Sova. It's a kind of a, what do they call it, a lap board, gaming lap board. The idea is you've got your keyboard and a mouse pad built into one thing that you can drag over to the couch, sit down, and play on the big screen. Anyway, uh, the design features a quick connect. Looks like an old PS2 or it's very similar to me. Uh, about, I don't know, two, three inches away from the keyboard. And then you've got 10 feet of cord or so that goes to your computer and plugs in with a dual USB, just like this. Anyway, uh, the issue seems to be when he's moving the cord, it'll disconnect. Uh, I'm thinking that the connector is the problem, but I don't know what, on which side. I've done a bit of Googling, and I took a look into it, and YouTube and that sort of thing. And apparently this is a common problem, but as of a couple of years ago, we'll call it about 2018 or so, you couldn't buy this uh, cord anymore from Rocat. So we're going to have to come up with something a little different. Since this is just really a long USB cord, we're going to replace it with a USB plug. So what I've done is I've taken a small USB extension cord, just like this guy, and we're going to figure out a way to splice it into the keyboard. That way he can keep using his gaming uh, lap board without having to go out and buy another one. They're not cheap. I think this one was about 150 bucks or so. So let's see what we can do to help out a buddy. All right then, let's get started. So, here's the cable connector I was talking about. It plugs in. It's basically a PS2. And let's see if we can duplicate the problem. So there it is going through its startup flash sequence. Ooh, look at me. I'm a fancy pants keyboard. I've got lights. With a little bit of wiggling, I can get it to crap out and fire up again and start and stop. So I can see what he's complaining about. It makes sense. I'm not 100% confident which side the uh, the problem is on or whether it's both. But at any rate, let's get started and see what we can figure out. So I'm just grabbing a quick toolkit, small flathead. Uh, this is pretty quick because I've run this video at double time. It's pretty boring to watch me take 15 minutes to pull a keyboard apart. And I don't know what the heck I'm going to say for seven minutes, but hey, I'll just keep talking anyway. That's right. Three dog, y'all. So here we go, magnetic tray, we've got a Torx bit on there, and we'll start yanking screws out of the back. And a one, and two. You know what, we're not going to count the screws, because that's absolutely ridiculous. You guys don't need to hear me talk about this shit. Let's do something more interesting. I'm going to throw some music on instead. These guys are Bellevue, local Calgary band. They deserve our support. Hey, support your local music scene. Give them a try. I'm going to post a link to their video on my uh, comment section. All right, here we go. Back in 2010, I told myself I wouldn't end up just like them A waste of space, no one to really, it's happening again By 25, I hope I have so much more than just these nights alone I always end up alone, yeah I wouldn't call this home It's where I have to live Counting stars again tonight Wondering if 
So, as you can see, there is just an absolute ton of screws around the back of this thing. Um, the, si the front and the back shell separates pretty easily. There's just the usual little snap clips. Um, you could probably work a pry bar or a spudger in there if you really wanted to, but uh, there's lots of finger holds. Just don't miss that in one screw that I did. Anyway, now we're just uh, taking her down. So, the keyboard... Uh, screws in with about five screws, and there's also a bunch holding on the mouse pad. I wasn't expecting to find a metal backing under there. So uh, kudos to Rocat for that one. I think that's a great idea. It adds a little bit of weight, but who cares, right? There we go. Metal back plate. Out goes the keyboard. Disconnect that. So that was a little USB connector. The blue thing we're looking at in the middle that I just skipped right over is basically a USB hub, which explains the uh, two connector or two USB wires going into the, the proprietary wire that Rocat sells you. I'm going to replace it with just this guy. It's a little USB extension cord. I'm going to snip off the end and boop, there it goes. And I am going to replace that cord you can see with the USB. Um, we're going to lose a little bit of power going in. The second USB just provides uh, power to the hub. But really, you're not going to run anything other than a mouse. If you are, um, you could come up with something clever. I didn't. Uh, my buddy's tried it out already. He says it works like a charm. So this guy is the connector that connects to that little blue USB hub. Still color-coded, as you can see. So, you know, it's not going to take a hell of a lot. That little circle thing is a uh, ferrite ring that just helps reduce noise and crosstalk and all that stuff. And there's an additional red wire that uh, grounds out to the uh, support there for the mouse. All I'm going to do is just solder these guys up together. So I've skipped over me stripping the wires and sliding heat shrink down on the individual ones. I've also got a big lump of heat shrink on the, uh, the, uh, the clear cover for the USB. I fed that through the hole in the center and that is going to give us uh, the stock fit, stock location. It's going to work exactly the same. So nothing fancy. Um, my uh, third hand there, that uh, weird looking doodad holding the wires, I just got that on eBay. They're like 25 bucks. What a score. Absolutely great to have. If you've done any electronics work without it, you can appreciate it, what it's like trying to hold two teeny weeny little wires in one place with one hand and solder with another and somehow you hold a soldering iron. It's, uh, it's ugly. But you do what you got to do and now I don't have to do it like that anymore. So kudos to me. So as you can see, I'm uh, just going to be soldering up these wires together. I've done a bit of skipping ahead. I mean, it, this isn't a soldering tutorial. Just setting up, making sure I'm getting a good hot solder and all four of these wires. The uh, additional ground wire that uh, was grounding out, I'm just going to wrap it actually around the um, reinforcing metal, the, uh, the braid that goes around the USBs, uh, the core USB four wires, and that'll be about it. I really got nothing to talk about. This is pretty basic stuff. Match the colors, solder them up, cover them in heat shrink very exciting. But what we're doing is we are giving a standard USB connector coming out of the back of this keyboard. And the plan is is that uh, my friend who gave it to this one to me to fix is going to go out and buy himself a 10-foot uh, Amazon USB extension cord. 
So he doesn't have to go out and buy a new keyboard. He doesn't have to try and find one of these unobtainable proprietary chords from Rowcat. And he gets to keep his uh, favorite lap board or whatever they call these things nowadays. All right. So there we go. Twist him up. Make it nice and tight. A little bit of solder. And there we go. Boom. So from here on out, the next thing I'm going to do is slide these little mini heat shrinks I put over the ends. I didn't show that on camera. It's pretty basic. There we go. All the heat shrink is on. It has been cooked on. I just use a lighter. You're not really supposed to. You're supposed to use a hot air gun. There you can see me wrapping that ground around the uh, reinforcing wire. I don't know if that's actually going to do anything because I don't think it connects to anything. But hey, that's what it came like for before. So. We'll leave it as is. There's the other large piece of heat shrink I was talking about. So we're going to use that to hold this in place, cover everything up, protect it from shorting out. There we go. I don't know if it's actually going to do anything, but what the hell. And very exciting. Slide it up. Heat it up. Lamp it up. Oh, <laughs> uh, you know, I watch a lot of YouTube videos, and i got to give it up to the guys who can make them interesting, because I am just dying here. So you're not actually supposed to use a lighter to uh, get your heat shrink uh, to go. You're supposed to use a heat gun. I don't own one. I suppose I could have used a, a blow dryer, like I did for the label on the back. I suppose I could go out to the garage and get the monster heat gun I have for uh, paint removal, but I'd be worried about melting the uh, keyboard cover. This'll do. I mean, it's never gonna see light of day or anything like that. So there we go. I've laid it out in the track where it was set before and setting it up for the little clamp. All I've done is I've added electrical tape around my heat shrink and everything just to protect it a little further. And I've used electrical tape to build up the USB cord big enough to uh, be held by the little clamp. USB hub goes back in, bunch of fitting, and once we get these wires routed and fit, it's just going to be reassembly. You guys don't need to hear me talk through that, so I think we're going to go find some more music for you. Thanks for tuning in, guys. I uh, might have something to say at the end, but uh, we'll figure that out in a moment. Let's hear from Bellevue again. I'm not sure which track we'll pick.
Alright, so as you guys can see, this is pretty straightforward stuff. Snap the covers back together, start putting the screws in. Don't try and put the screws in the not a screw hole that I went to twice. A little bit of super glue to hold that label back on. There we go, it's like it never happened. And here we go. Get rid of some junk and we're going to give this sucker a test in just a second. So, I have got uh, another longer USB extension cord that I'm going to sneak over from my laptop, which I'm using to record this. And there we go. We power up. Running fine. Passes the wiggle test. It's everything we needed. So I'm going to call this one a success. This is my buddy's uh, lap board ready to go. Save him 150 bucks. Can't argue with that. You help your friends out, and maybe one day they'll repay the favor. And there we are. So, we've got a standard USB plugging into the end of this guy. And uh, that's it. That's my Rocat Sova repair video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Give it a like. I am going to try and do a much better job on production next time. But for now, zero budget productions equal, well, you know, learning curve quality. We'll see if we can't make the next one better. Hopefully in a week or so we're going to get back to you with the hot tub repair video. So thank you very much from Stuff and Things. Bye.